analogy of this river overflowing. Mm -hmm. I literally mean that your body will contort itself in any way it can to try and keep you alive. Your body's number one prime directive is keep you alive. Right. It's not thinking that if it robs your bones today, you're going to get osteopenia or osteoporosis. Right. It's thinking if it doesn't do the acid alkaline balance today, you're going to die. Right. So that's what that's about. That is the true picture of displacement. Let's just breathe that in. <sighs> and I'd like to just breathe that breathe right, it right on out. out. <laughs> I know that's not that's not a fun thing. As you can see, we're not going down a fabulous path. No, it doesn't look like a lot of fun after the whole colon contortion uh, <laughs> yeah. tour. <laughs> after that, as you can as you can see, we're 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 kind of headed down a path here. Right. Um, it's not feeling really good, but I want you to have the knowledge, and then we're going to turn it around. We're gonna we're gonna Absolutely. make we're gonna get to the positive. Just hang in there with me. We only got two more stages left. So so now what we have is stage five of disease, which is called manifestation. Mm -hmm. Manifestation. Well, the best way to describe this is in stage four of disease, you're thinking. I need to do something. Mm -hmm. Maybe I should go to the doctor. Maybe I should, you know, pick up some pills. I need to do something. In stage five of disease, the the symptoms of a full blown disease are there, and you finally go to the doctor. And unfortunately, the doctor says, "I'm sorry, you have diabetes. You have high blood pressure. You have an autoimmune disease. Whatever." So manifestation is when a disease is actually named. It is actually named. And so at this point. This is huge. At this point, without proactivity, dedication, motivation, persistence, it will be very, very hard to reverse the course of disease. Very, very hard. You will either have to go on medication or you will have to decide with every cell in your being that you are going to turn this thing around. At this point, the water in our river has caused problems in every place that it's gone. And that's the reason why we have manifested a particular dis-ease in the body. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so I'm going to briefly cover flowering because it's not a very fun thing to talk about. Oh, okay. <laughs> but, um, but you but, have to know the six stages. I want you to know all stages and so we'll, we'll get to the positive, I promise. Mm -hmm. So flowering, it's called flowering because this is these are actually all of these words, manifestation, flowering, accumulation, they're all Sanskrit words that I've translated into English. Mm -hmm. Okay, So flowering means in, in Ayurveda, you know how a flower blooms and it mm -hmm. comes into fruition and then it fades away. Mm -hmm. So flowering is a very difficult stage. This is when the body systems are starting to shut down. It takes a huge spiritual awakening, um, intense work, very hard to turn around here because at this point the person is starting to give up. Mm -hmm. You know, they're giving up. And so this stage of disease is really when the person kind of prepares for death. Mm -hmm. That's how that is. And so before people freak out as we're talking about stages of disease, I like to say this at right after flowering. Each stage of disease, each stage of disease can go on for 20, 30, 40 years. Okay? You can be in accumulation for 10, 20 years. Okay? Mm -hmm. So it's not like you go through these stages and you're like, oh my God, I'm just, do you know things are going to fall apart? In like three months. No. <laughs> it's not going to happen in three months. That's not going to happen. Okay? It, it is a, a progression. And the reason why I, I want to go through this is because I want you to start to wake up and, and know when you're advancing, you know, because the whole principle of Ayurveda and many naturopathic modalities, the whole principle is, hey, you're going in the wrong direction. Turn the caboose around. Mm. And Ayurveda says, well, if you can go this way, mm -hmm. well, can't you go that way? Right. I mean, really. Absolutely. That was the first thing that helped me, you know, overcome bronchitis. I thought, you know, I read in, in uh, Deepak Chopra's Perfect Health book, that was the first book of his that I read, and, and this message came to me that if you can get something, you can unget something. Mm -hmm. And I was like, but I've got something for 27 years. <laughs> Why didn't somebody tell me that like 26 and a half years ago? I've been suffering all this time and somebody tell me. So I was actually angry and I held on to the bronchitis longer because it was like part of my identity was being taken away from me. Right. And so Deepak Chopra really was my Morpheus. Mm -hmm. Deepak Chopra unplugged me from the matrix. Mm -hmm. When I wrapped my mind around the concept that you could unget something, 
I started on getting like crazy. I got the congestion and mm -hmm. the cough and the, the bronchitis went away. The adrenal fatigue that I had, all the muscle tension. The, the concept, wrapping your mind around the concept of ungetting something is really why I do so much work around teaching people mm -hmm. about the stages of disease. You weren't born in a stage of disease. Some people are. But mm -hmm. for the most part, you're not. You got it. Mm -hmm. So that means if you can get accumulation, you can unaccumulate. Right. You know, you buy a whole bunch of stuff, you can get yeah. rid of a, a whole, a bunch, bunch, of whole bunch of stuff, right? right? It's the same thing. It's the same concept. Okay. So I just I just commend you for taking the, the whole body, the whole person, the whole mental, spiritual, physical, emotional component of someone and treating that in the way that they can understand, in the way that right. they can begin to adopt it for themselves. Right. Kudos. I just had to say that. I'm oh, so you. inspired. <laughs> I try to explain to people that this particular life that we're living is fun. The conventional thought that you have is that, oh, I have to go through all this horrible stuff to get healthy and it's going to be the drag. I'm like, no, it's not going to be drag. Not when you work with me. We're going to have fun. We are going to have fun. We're going to eat food that tastes really good. I'm not going to put you on rice cakes. Mm -hmm. I went to Costa Rica once and the monkeys came down off the trees when we were in the um, on the beach. Uh -huh. And... And you're not supposed to feed them, but I thought a rice cake ain't going to hurt nobody. You uh -huh. know? I just wanted to see if that monkey would have the gall to walk <laughs> up to me. The monkey walked up to me, grabbed the rice cake out of his hand, ran up in the tree, took a bite and went... <laughs> <laughs> so if a monkey's not going to eat I'm it... I'm like, come on now. Even monkeys won't eat rice cake. You know, I mean, we were cracking up. We were like, oh my God, did you see that monkey? monkey's like, I want a pineapple. I want no... Give me a cookie. It was so funny. I will never forget that. And so I tell people all the time, I'm not going to put you on rice cakes. I'm going to make the food really delicious and really decadent and wonderful. And but I don't want it to be this whole, ooh, let's see, do. I have you to get my Birkenstocks on now. Yeah, put your Birkenstocks <laughs> on. We're going to go floating in the clouds. No. Uh -huh. I'm trying to keep it real. And within your busy lifestyle as a corporate professional, as a whatever your, uh, your job function may be, mm -hmm. you can do this. Fantastic. And you also do a newsletter? I do. I do. I have received your newsletter. It's fabulous. I, that's when I first started learning about the six stages. Yeah. And this is fascinating. That was with stage that. one that you got. Yeah. Right. So I'm right in the middle of emailing people. Uh, I send a newsletter out every month. And that newsletter is usually comprised of a recipe, some kind of motivational something, any events that I happen to be doing, and something educational. So right now I just launched the, the six stages of disease. And my first one came out. Um, with the first stage so if you're interested in that I you know I'd love for you to to join my mailing list and I'll be happy to send it out to anyone who who's interested in receiving it fantastic how can our viewers join your mailing list well um, email me okay. the best way to do that would be to email me it's p hubbard p h u b b a r d at radiant health strategies dot com Fantastic. And I'll add you to the mail. So, are you ready to get to the positive side now? Yes, yes, the flowering, yes, that's... that's we've we've uh, gone yeah, to we've flowering, <laughs> we're, we're feeling kind of like this. Yes. Let's turn that around. Okay, okay, great. You can totally turn all of this around. And the way you do it, Ayurveda and pretty much every other modality talks about how to reverse the course of disease. And the way you do it, it's four ways. Mm -hmm. And if you want to completely eradicate dis-ease from your body, you have to do all four. But here's the beauty. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do all four at once. Mm -hmm. You can just do one thing and everything else will start to kick in. It's kind of like you put yourself in the river and you let that river just take you. When it's time, mm -hmm. you'll go to the next stage. So, because sometimes when I tell people what the different things are, they're like, well, I'll do this and that, but I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. Like, no, you, you, you do have to do it all. And so here are the four ways. It is emotion, mm -hmm. nutrition, mm -hmm. herbs, mm -hmm. and then body work and treatment. And I'll explain that. First of all, we in this country, because conventional thought is responsible for the advancement of disease, we don't know how to take care of ourselves emotionally in a healthy way. There's all this social stigma around creating emotional health for the, for right. the body. So open your mind to all the different ways that you can heal emotionally. What I tell people all the time is healing emotionally is not necessarily about sitting on a couch in telling people your problems. Sometimes healing emotionally is saying, okay, we work together, 
and this is my responsibility and that's your responsibility and somehow you keep putting your responsibility on my responsibility mm -hmm. can we talk about that right that's emotional health mm -hmm. anything that can be a stressor in your life anything that comes up so learning how to deal with emotions setting healthy boundaries and all of that stuff that's really important nutrition you know we get that if you want the car to go mm -hmm. you might want to put some gas in it mm -hmm. might want to you know mm -hmm. now if you put sugar in the gas tank your car is going to go excuse me yeah <laughs> now we do this all the time in our bodies and wonder why things happen right, uh -huh, right. you got to put the right fuel so a lot of this is about how do you put the right fuel in your body herbs all of this i hope that you all don't believe the hype over stuff like swine flu and all of that other oh, craziness. Oh, we've, that yeah, we've had just, a few little uh, snippets on our show about yeah. just let it go, take oh, care of yourself. Oh, please. That stuff is just, you know, don't believe the hype around that. That's just a bunch of crap. And the thing is, if you really learned a little bit about herbs, I'm not talking about taking herbs. I'm not talking about going to the store and buying herbs and taking them. I'm just learning, I'm talking about learning how to cook your food with more rosemary and oregano and turmeric and just adding if you got a steady stream of herbs in your food it would make your food more flavorful mm -hmm. and those herbs would act as blood cleansers and so forth and you wouldn't even have to worry about all this stuff going around mm -hmm. and wash your hands that's important too yeah you gotta wash your hands. <laughs> so we talked about emotion nutrition herbs and then body work I tell people all the time body work is important it's not important for everyone but usually there's something that manifests in the form of needing body work and my best example of that is if you have a splinter in your hand mm -hmm. there's no no level of emotional nutritional or herbal work that you can do that's going to get that splinter out of your hand mm -hmm. if you want to get the splinter out you need to go get you some tweezers <laughs> And pull that sucker out, mm -hmm. okay? So there are some things that occur in the body, like edema, for example, mm -hmm. that you have to physically move out because it has built up to the point where your body's like, I can't do it. <laughs> so emotion, nutrition, herbs, body work and treatment. At some point or another, you need to do it. And sometimes body work and treatment can be an Ayurvedic treatment. There's all these different types of cleansing treatments. It could be therapeutic massage or all the things that fall under there. And sometimes it's just walk for 30 minutes a day mm -hmm. something like that I mean it there's a whole big uh, arena mm -hmm. that falls into the body work and treatment as well so that's how you turn it around and by incorporating that synergistically in a way that works for you then you reverse you begin to reverse the course of disease fantastic thank you so much Phyllis for inviting us into your office yes, today thank you for coming for enlightening us for t letting our viewers know just so much valuable information that you have thank you go to Phyllis's website check it out radianthealthstrategies.com mm -hmm. send her an email you can go to our site to get that email address we'll put it up for you as well Get on her newsletter, learn more, educate yourself, and, and take good care of yourself so that you don't even ever have to get to those later stages of mm -hmm. three, four, five, and six. Yes. <laughs> Everything that I'm talking about is about loving yourself. Yes. Nutrition, herbs, body work, treatment, you're doing it because you love yourself. The best gift you can give anybody is a healthy you. That's it. That's it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So thanks once again to Phyllis Hubbard of Radiant Health Strategies. I learned so much in that interview. Phyllis is so much fun as you could see by the interview. And she has such a beautiful office and a beautiful garden where she grows a lot of her own herbs and vegetables that we weren't able to show in this show. And uses all of that in her practice. So boy, it really is about synergy, isn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> so thanks so much for joining us for this evening. We appreciate all of you viewers and have a wonderful wonderful and safe weekend. Have a great weekend. Enjoy.